Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Brooke Brown. We are coming with our spiritual fitness word today so we can do our workout, get this word in us. We are continuing in our study in the book of Romans. So while you're getting your Bible, your pen, and your paper, don't forget to look underneath this YouTube video for information on our morning prayer Monday through Friday, the link for our sit-ups book, and any other information that you need. We know this spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture is what this is all about. It's exercising godliness, meditating on this word, getting spiritually fit so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil, run this race so that we are battle ready, war ready, that we are being perfected, being changed, being transformed so that we can draw near nearer to God and he nearer to us. And so we know we are changing, growing, progressing, and being impacted by the word of God so we can impact the world. So open up your Bibles. We are continuing our study in the book of Romans. We are in chapter four. Yesterday, we did the first half of the chapter. Today, we are going to do the second half. We are beginning in verse 13. And yesterday, in our last lesson, we talked about how um, because we've been now we've gone through the first three and a half chapters. So if you didn't get it, you need to go back. But we talked about the circumcision, the circumcised and the uncircumcised circumcision of the heart is what we're focused on now, because we know that the Jewish people, um, they are. Um, they were separated from the other nations known to be God's people because the males on the eighth day were circumcised. This set them apart that others would know they belong to God. But in the New Testament, we see that because of God's grace, right? That we all have an opportunity to be God's chosen, God's children, to be in relationship with him, in right standing with him. That is righteousness through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this means that we have circumcision of the heart, where the word comes in, refining and cleansing, getting rid of the fleshly things, changing us from the inside out. And when we have a heart for God, when we are yielded to him and submitted to him and living for the one who died for us, if our faith and hope and trust is in the Lord, right? That's spiritual circumcision. This makes us right with God. And so yesterday we talked about how, um, how Abraham... Um, was made righteous to God, called righteous, not because of the circumcision. It was before he was circumcised, before circumcision was even introduced to him at the age of 99. Abram was called at the age of 75 to go where God told him to go and believe what God told him. And because he believed, because of his faith, he was made righteous with God before he was ever circumcised. And so, we are going to look today, looking in verse 13. And it says, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there's no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who's the father of us all. And then verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now let's recap these uh, four verses of scripture, 13 through 17. This is what it's saying to us. It's saying clearly God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to God's law, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. Remember, we said you can't work your way into right standing with God. Otherwise, salvation is not a free gift. It's wages that you earn because of some work that you did. But salvation is a gift, and we can receive it through faith. 
So his promise to Abram when he told him he was going to make him the father of many nations and the whole earth would be blessed through him, meaning he was going to have a child and he was going to have descendants. Even though he was past the age and Sarah was past childbearing age, it was his faith. And so he, um, the Bible tells us it was through his faith, not uh, based on his obedience to God's law, Obviously, when we truly trust God and we have faith in the finished work on the cross, when our faith is in the Lord, it causes us, right, to obey God, to want to please God, to surrender to God, to, you know, to be changed in our actions and our thoughts and our deeds and our decisions. But we can't do good things to be saved. When we're saved, we do good things. And so we want to obey him because we realize the love that he has for us, that God is faithful. So verse 14 is telling us if God's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary and the promise is pointless, right? And it's telling us for the law always brings punishment on those who try to obey it. The only way to avoid breaking the law is to have no law to break. And so we had talked about you know, the law, we talked about all of the commandments. We talked about the fact that it's impossible for us every day, all day to keep the commands. It's impossible because we're in this flesh, we're in the world. Not to say that we are supposed to make that as an excuse, but what we're supposed to do, we're being perfected. And so we shouldn't be stuck in sin, continuing in the same sin, nursing, rehearsing, practicing, and perfecting sin. No. We are being sanctified. We're being changed constantly. However, it is impossible for us to be perfect, only Jesus is. And so we have to realize that there is no way that we can just be in right standing with God by trying to follow all of the rules. We have to press into him, have faith in him, trust in him that he is forgiving, that he is loving, that he is perfecting us, that he is guiding us and leading us. It makes us focus on God. It makes us focus on the Lord and live for Christ. And so this is the transformation. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind. We are constantly being changed, growing in spiritual fruit, producing. And so this is telling us the only way to avoid breaking the law is just not to have a law to break because we talked about knowing the law, knowing all the commands, and there's over 600. We know the Ten Commandments, but there's only over 600 in the Old Testament. And just knowing them just shows us our sinful state, that we are in a hopeless state without God, without his mercy, without his grace, without the finished work of Christ. We are hopeless. But... But God, rich in mercy. And so then verse 16 is saying, so the promise is received by faith. It's given as a free gift. And we are all certain to receive it whether or not we live according to the law of Moses if we have faith like Abraham. So it's all about having the faith. Moses, I mean, Abraham had the faith to do what God told him to do. When God told him to get up and leave his father's house in uh, Genesis chapter 12, he got up and left. When God told him he was going to have a son, he had to believe him. When he had the son, finally, when he and, and, and Sarah had the son, Isaac, 25 years later, and then the son, Isaac, began to grow, and God told him to take him up on the mountain and to offer him as a burnt offering, he trusted God. And so over and over again, we see that God is faithful and that Abraham trusted him. And so... If we, if we have to realize that this, the promise is to those that believe. And so when you believe and when you trust, it changes your direction. And so you draw nearer to God and the word says he draws nearer to you. And so it tells us Abraham is the father of all who believe. When you hear people talking about, you know, their Abraham seed and Abraham is the father of faith. He is the father of Right? The promise that was given to him is we are his seed through faith. We are engrafted into that family. The Hebrews, the children of Israel, were God's chosen people. His, his chosen people in the Old Testament, the people that he called, that he chose, not because they were good and great because they did something, but because that's who he wanted to choose. Right, And so he chose them, he led them, 
He delivered them. He supernaturally took care of them, right? And so through our faith in the Lord, through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the finished work on the cross, we're able to be engrafted into that family of Abraham, God's chosen people, because the children of Israel came through Abraham. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. His 12 sons are where the 12 tribes of Israel came from. So they are children of Israel. And so we know that we are engrafted into that family because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and our faith in the Lord God Almighty. And so Abraham is the father of all who believe. And verse 17 is telling us that is what the scriptures mean when God told us. I've made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in God who brings the dead back to life, who creates new things out of nothing. So when God told Abram back in Genesis chapter 12, he'd be the father of many nations. First of all, we know the nation of Israel, right, came through Abraham. But we're the father of many nations. That's when we're engrafted in. After Jesus came and he died on the cross and rose from the dead. And our faith in him that he died for our sins. He paid the price, right? The penalty for our sins. And we can be forgiven and cleansed and adopted into God's family. And grafted into the family. And made, uh, you know, the, the seed of Abraham. Children of God, right? And so then in verse 18. Beginning in verse 18, the King James is saying, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken? So shall thy seed be. That's what God had said to him. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. So this is telling us against all hope, he believed in hope. It looked like it couldn't happen at a hundred years old, right? It looked like it was impossible. How could he have a child? Sarah's 90. They are way over childbearing age, right? If we lived to be that long, we wouldn't even be thinking about trying to have a child, right? But he believed. It says he didn't consider his own body to be dead. He didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's wound at her age. That at, at her wound couldn't carry a child. That she was past childbearing age. He didn't stagger at God's promise through unbelief. He was strong in faith, it says. He gave glory to God. And he was fully persuaded that whatever God had promised, God was able to do it. Period. And then it tells us, in verse 22, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. So now, because he believed in what seemed impossible in the natural, what wouldn't, couldn't take place with a carnal mind, you can't believe it. But his faith counted him as righteous to God because he didn't stagger at God's promises. He didn't waver in his faith. When God told him this was going to happen, he believed it was going to happen. He went where God told him to go. And so now, it tells us in verses 23 through 25, Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. And so the Bible is telling us when God counted uh, Abraham as righteous in right standing with him, um, it's telling us it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him. The one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. He was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. If we believe, remember it was recorded that Abram, Abraham was made right with God 
This was before he was circumcised. So we can't just say, oh, you know, it's the Jewish people and only them. Yes, they're God's chosen people. Yes, they were God's chosen people in the Old Testament, right? However, Abraham was counted righteous with God before he was circumcised. Before the Hebrews were born, before the children of Israel were born, remember, he's the father of faith. He's the father of Israel. The children of Israel came through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When God told Abram about the many nations, about his people, the people weren't born yet. Isaac wasn't even born yet. And when Isaac was born, then he had to have Jacob. And then Jacob had to get married to his wives and have the 12 sons. And then they grew up and then the children of Israel were in bondage for 400 and something years before Moses even delivered them. It was a long time before the children of Israel were walking in the things that God had promised way back in Genesis 15. And so this is what, what the word is saying. It was recorded that he was made righteous with God because of his faith, because it encourages us and lets us know, hey, I wasn't born, an, uh, you know, a child of Israel, a Hebrew, a Jew. I wasn't. But through my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for my sins and God raised him from the dead, I can be forgiven and cleansed. Uh, God's grace and mercy. God loved me and chose me. And I am a child of God. Through my faith, I can be made right with God, adopted into his family. And this is God's forgiveness. This is God's love in action. This is God's mercy in action. This is God's faithfulness in action. And so we have to believe it is through faith. And this is what we have to preach. This is what we have to teach. Is that people need to know it is the faith. And that's why we have to preach the gospel because how can they um you know believe in someone they don't know and how can they know unless someone tells them right and so how beautiful are the feet of those that go and preach the glad tidings the good news the gospel and so we're going to end there i want you to go back right and study this chapter get some other verses that go along with it this is your spiritual workout this is your homework your memory verse is where was that memory verse 16 verse 16 is the memory verse today chapter 14 verse 16 is your memory verse right actually you really need to add 17 because it's the middle of a sentence um but if you can't if it's too much for you um just do 16 and it says therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. And so, um, and you can memorize some other ones as well if you want to, right? But memorize that one. Go back and study and meditate on this. We have to walk in faith. And so the lesson, the principle you want to pull out of this, you know, you look at the impossible situation that Abraham was facing, right? He was told that this promise was going to come. He was going to be the father of many nations. This is a man that is old. His wife is old. And he's being told, you're going to have, you're going to be the father of a great nation, which means he has to have a child because it's going to come through his descendants. But he's too old to have a child. So this is God making a promise of something that seems impossible, that doesn't make sense in the natural mind and the carnal mind. He had to have enough faith to go with it, enough faith to believe it, enough faith not to stagger his promises. And then waiting 25 years, like you already God promises you, right? He promises you the things in his word, but you look at your natural situation and you say, this is impossible. This can't happen in the natural. And then you keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, right? And if you tell somebody, right, he, if he told anybody, they had to think he was crazy because he and Sarah didn't stop aging. They kept aging. They kept getting older with no manifestation, with nothing happening, with no child uh, being conceived until 25 years later. Do you have that kind of faith? where you believe the promises of God, when nothing is pointing to it, nothing is showing it, there's nothing but Abraham believed the one that was able to bring the dead back to life and make something out of nothing. Do you believe? 
And so this is our practical application today. It's to check our faith. We're going to close out in prayer. Don't forget to share this message with somebody who may benefit from it. Someone who too wants to grow spiritually so that we are always war ready, battle ready, being impacted by the word, growing, changing, and progressing so we can go and impact the world. We've been called and chosen. We're warriors on the battlefield. We have work to do, but we have to be worthy of the call and we have to know the word so we can share it. We pray, we praise, and we preach. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name and thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord God, for pouring into us individually and collectively, giving us with all our getting understanding. Help us, Lord God, Father, as your Holy Spirit is our teacher, to grab hold of this word and apply it to our life. To walk to trust you in everything and for everything. Lord, we don't lean to our own understanding, but we submit to your will. We ask that you would just purge us, prune us, perfect us. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you heal anyone watching this that's dealing with sickness, illness, virus, or disease, spiritual, mental, physical, or emotional. You are the God that healed at Jehovah Rapha. We trust you, Lord God, Father, to heal and to make us whole. Guide us and lead us that we're effective for the kingdom, that we're bearing fruit that will remain. And Father, that we honor you in everything and worship you and spirit and in truth, praising you continually. Lord God, giving thanks in everything, preaching the gospel to every creature. Help us to be consistent. Help us to be, Lord God, Father, all that you purpose us to be, that our life will bring you glory, honor, and praise. We love and honor and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life.